name is Casey Brooks. I am the Sustainable Agriculture Program Coordinator at Zane State College. Uh, there are a lot of different definitions for sustainable agriculture. Uh, depending upon who you talk to, you'll get a, a completely different answer. Uh, I tend to describe it as um, looking at the entire farm or garden, looking at the entire space. So you want to look at the environment. Uh, you also want to look at the social impact of the farm or the garden, uh, and then you also want to look at uh, the economic impact from uh, agriculture. So those are kind of the three, the three pillars. Uh, you could be someone that works at a restaurant and is working with local farmers in order to get fresh produce into the, the restaurant, or you could be a producer actually growing the, the crops or raising the, the chickens or the pigs or whatever the, the creature may be. Uh, or you could be some sort of buyer for a, a larger grocery store or something along those lines, or even small grocery stores. Uh, the typical day could vary. A, a typical day for me, being a professor, yes, it's still technically in the sustainable agriculture field, but you know, I go to my little office and then I teach students, and, and uh, it's a lot different than if I were a producer. So a, a typical day for somebody that's, that's actually raising the food is, tends to start pretty early, especially if you're raising livestock, because you want to make sure they've got food and they've got water. Um, you might spend a lot of time weeding your flower beds or um, harvesting this time of year or harvesting corn and tomatoes. So uh, it, it just depends on sort of what direction you've taken. Um, there aren't a lot of sustainable agriculture programs um, at, at higher education levels, although they're starting to get a lot more, um, including this one at, at Bain State. Um, pretty much starting early, uh, as you go through high school, there are lots of uh, vocational ag courses that you could take, um, even just having a good foundation in biology. Uh, I mean, really, that's, that's kind of the core of agriculture, is knowing the soil, knowing um, the plants and animals that are going to be living on that particular area. Uh, the program at Zane State is a, a two-year uh, technical degree. So you would take classes uh, like plant science, animal science, some agricultural marketing, uh, and generally students will do some sort of uh, internship in between their first and second years, um, which really gives them the, that hands-on experience, uh, preferably on a farm or if they're into the more marketing side of things, um, then they can you know, work with a, a local producer, local grower, um, to try to get those, those products marketed. I think that the foundational biology courses um, really sort of give you the, the idea of, of how a, a plant behaves, essentially. You know, how, how does a plant grow? What, what does it require in order to grow? Basic biology is, is a good start. Um, I think it's also important to, to take some economics classes, sort of understand how, how markets work and um, what sort of role they, they might want to play in that. Um, along with that, economics would be some sort of sales. Um, again, that advertising side of things is, is pretty important. If you're eighth, ninth, tenth grade, the, the classes that you want to really start out with is, is biology. Um, I hate to say it, but algebra and geometry are actually useful in, in the field because you, you do, um, whether you're figuring out acreage, um, planting spaces, those kinds of things. So it is um, important to have some, some math skills. Uh, the biggest advice that I would give is to, to start early. I mean, if you're interested in gardening or interested in farming, um, do some volunteering. And even if you're, um, some of the places that I've worked in the past, even you know, we'd have five-year-olds that would come out and help us feed the chickens. Um, those kinds of things, if, if you're interested in it, talk to your parents, say, hey, I, I'd like to find a farm and, and volunteer at this farm. Uh, and then you can sort of progress from there if, if you got a little bit of hands-on experience, then it's easier to get an internship later. Uh, it's easier to get to get jobs once you've graduated. The nice thing about sustainable agriculture, um, the job market's really growing, um, and and it's it's pretty diverse. There, I remember when I was when I was in high school, you almost never saw organic food in grocery stores, and now you you can see it in just about any store. Um, it's still not quite as affordable as I'd like it to be, but um, so. There are a lot of jobs available for people, especially people that are um, self-starters that, that want to, you know, they might have a, a small tract of land and they want to grow some sort of specialty crop, whether it's uh, mushrooms or heirloom tomatoes or um, okra, you know, whatever, whatever the thing is. Um, so there are a lot of folks that, that can kind of grow things along that line. Um, there are a lot of jobs in um, education. Uh, like this, this program just getting started. There are a number of colleges that are starting those programs as well. Uh, and especially in Ohio, uh, around the Columbus area, there's a lot of 
push for um, more local regional food um, that you can you know, open up a restaurant and, and get that local food in there or you can be the producer that supplies a particular restaurant. One of the biggest challenges with, with farmers now is that, because um, I, I came from a farming background and a lot of folks are leaving the farm partly because it's not as profitable. So looking at sustainable agriculture gives you um, maybe some other channels that will provide a little bit more profit for the farm. Even if you have, let's say you have 300 acres and you only do the, the sort of sustainable or organic agriculture on two of those acres, that's still giving you uh, another outlet for your, your products.